This is a brief video on eating disorders in the DSM-5. We're going to be talking about anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, and binge eating disorder. We're going to be doing a comparison of these three disorders on the last slide with a Venn diagram that helps you differentiate these three disorders and helps you keep them straight, helps you identify the unique points about each disorder. And this should help with identifying which disorder is being described on an exam. Before we begin, we have a bit of epidemiology here. We have a world map showing the deaths due to eating disorders per millions in 2012. And you can kind of see the prevalence of eating disorders across the world in different countries. And it seems like Western countries like the United States and Western Europe, as well as Australia and Brazil have higher rates of eating disorders that lead to death. Let's start with anorexia nervosa. The main premise behind anorexia nervosa is that a person has a preoccupation with their weight and body image, and this results in low food absorption. So a person has low caloric intake, resulting in a low BMI. They have a BMI less than 18.5. Now, how do you get low food absorption? How do you get low caloric intake? There's two ways for that to happen. There's the restrictive type, where a person severely limits their food intake. If they don't eat food, then obviously they won't absorb food and they'll have low caloric intake. The next subtype is the binge eating slash purging type, where somebody eats and then they follow that eating with compensation. And of course your mouth has, or your, your GI tract has an in and an out, in through your mouth, out through your bottom. You can remove food from either end of your GI tract. So you can induce vomiting, you can induce diarrhea with a laxative, and you can also over-exercise to kind of purge the food that you take. So either way, a person has a low BMI, either by restricting the food that they take or binge eating followed by purging. Anorexia often coexists with perfectionism. A lot of times these patients are the student who gets amazing grades and is a really good gymnast or a really, really uh, athletic person who always maintains their low body weight and is very fit and is always in shape. Of course, anorexia can also coexist with depression. There are several associated medical issues with being very thin, as in anorexia nervosa. Some of these are obvious, like starvation, but there's also nutritional defic deficiencies that can lead to osteoporosis, which can lead to more bone fractures. Women have no periods after a while. The body shuts down that mechanism and prevents menstruation. Anemia, of course, when you don't get iron, you get all kinds of electrolyte disturbances, and this is most prominent uh, when you refeed as well, you want to monitor electrolytes um, and look for hypophosphatemia in refeeding syndrome when treating somebody with anorexia nervosa. A quick way to remember that hypophosphatemia is associated with refeeding is because when you're refeeding, the body's making more ATP. And if you're making more ATP, you're going to have to use phosphate groups leading to hypophosphatemia. So that's a quick way to remember that electrolyte disturbance with refeeding. Body also goes into a hypothyroid state. It's called euthyroid sick syndrome. And this is a little unusual from other hypothyroidism because you have a low T3 and T4 as you'd expect, but you also have a low or normal TSH. So the body is purposely lowering the basal metabolic rate because there are less nutrients. There's less energy for the body to use. So the body's toning down basal metabolic rate. If a person is pregnant, of course, you can have prematurity in pregnancy as well as intrauterine growth restriction. To treat anorexia nervosa, you mainly want to do psychotherapy. You can often admit patients if they're very sick and very low BMIs. Some studies have shown that a low dose olanzapine, which is an atypical antipsychotic, can also be effective. Um, it's unclear whether the antipsychotic effects of olanzapine is what's doing the trick or if it's the metabolic syndrome side effect of olanzapine that's working. It's important to note that SSRIs do not work an in anorexia. Uh, they do work in bulimia, but SSRIs rely on serotonin to change the workings of the brain. And serotonin is made from tryptophan. So if a person is nutritionally deficient, they're not getting tryptophan, they can't make serotonin, so SSRIs will not work. Next is bulimia. We're going to go a little faster now. Bulimia is defined by binge eating followed by compensatory behavior, so it has some similarities with anorexia. Compensatory behavior, in this case, can be a purge type, 
where a person eats and then induces vomiting, induces diarrhea with a laxative, or takes a diuretic to pee. In the purge type, specifically vomiting, there's a lot of signs and symptoms that can give away that a person is inducing vomiting. This is like teeth and enamel erosion. You could see up here that these pers this person's teeth have eroded and their enamel on the top of their mouth has eroded in that area as well. Esophageal tears can also occur. Parotitis, which is inflammation of your parotid salivary glands can occur. And a person might have thickened knuckles from inducing vomiting with their fingers. Um, when they put their fingers in the back of their throat to, uh, to make themselves vomit, they can build a callus on their knuckles and that's a sign of purging. There's also a non-purge type in bulimia, and that would be excess exercise and diet, just like we saw in anorexia. The one key difference between bulimia and anorexia is that patients with bulimia are normal weight or overweight. That means that their BMI is greater than 18.5. To treat bulimia nervosa, again, you want to do psychotherapy. You can admit patients that's less common with bulimia, but outpatient psychotherapy is common. SSRIs are effective. So for instance, fluoxetine would work. Uh, medication bupropion is another antidepressant. Uh, this is contraindicated in bulimia as well as anorexia because it lowers the seizure threshold. And in a person who induces vomiting or doesn't eat or eats too much, they have all kinds of electrolyte disturbances that can cause seizures. And if a person is already predisposed to seizures because of that, you don't want to further lower the seizure threshold with bupropion. Next is binge eating disorder. Binge eating disorder is similar to bulimia in that there's binge eating, but this is without compensatory behavior. So bulimia was binge eating with compensatory, binge eating is binge eating without compensatory behavior. So this again does not fit the qualifications of bulimia. To be diagnosed with binge eating disorder, you need at least three of the following which describe binge eating. You need to eat quickly, eat alone out of embarrassment, eat until uncomfortably full, binge eat even when you're not hungry, and feelings of guilt, depression, or disgust after eating. Patients with binge eating disorder, as you might imagine, are often overweight, and they therefore uh, can suffer from metabolic syndrome, cardiovascular disease, and diabetes, like you would normally see in the overweight population. Treatment here is psychotherapy again. You obviously want to prescribe a strict diet and exercise regime. You can use stimulants that have been shown to help to suppress that appetite and Orlistat, which is a, which is a, a pill for obese people um, that, that inhibits the pancreatic lipase, essentially prevents you from digesting and absorbing fat and kind of makes you poop out all your fat. That might also help in people with binge eating disorder. This last slide, I think, is most helpful, helps you compare the three disorders and kind of see uh, what's unique about them. For instance, in anorexia, that's the only one that has a low BMI. Um, anorexia, again, is low food absorption, either by restricting your diet or eating and then purging. Low BMI is what's unique. Uh, bulimia nervosa is binging, then purging, and then binge eating disorder is binging without the purge. Um, treatments for all of them include psychotherapy and all of them can contain binge eating um, and that's important to note because you cannot use binge eating as a differentiating factor treatment that's specific to bulimia is ssris again that doesn't work in anorexia because you don't have tryptophan to make the serotonin um, both anorexia and bulimia can have compensatory behavior and the signs of vomiting like we saw thickened knuckles eroding teeth eroding enamel um, esophageal tears, and swollen parotid glands. Bupropion is also contraindicated in both of these because you have electrolyte disturbances and bupropion um, reduces that seizure threshold. And bulimia and binge eating disorders have a high or normal BMI. So this Venn diagram could help you keep these three disorders straight when you have a question regarding them. This has been a short video on anorexia, bulimia, and binge eating disorders, the three eating disorders. Um, there are a couple other things in the DSM-5 regarding eating disorders like pica, but those are less likely due to a primary psychiatric cause. I hope this video was helpful and thank you for listening.